Hey, what is up you guys? I'm Tatiana. This is my Mexican red rump tarantula, Harper, and you're watching Tatiana's Tiny Zoo. In today's video, we'll be going over the Tlilto- Oh god. Tlilto-Cadl Vegans, formerly known as the Brachypelma Vegans, and everything you need to know before getting one. Harper was the second tarantula I ever got, and she's been with me for over five years, so this species is very close to my heart. I can't wait to tell you all about this awesome spider and why this species makes a great tarantula for beginner keepers. Let's get right into it. This species is a New World terrestrial tarantula. Its natural range is predominantly in southeastern Mexico. However, they have been found in Central America, in places like Costa Rica and El Salvador to name a few. This tarantula species is also considered an established, non-native species in the state of Florida, where it is thought to have been introduced through accidental or intentional releases of individuals imported via the pet trade. Some sources say their numbers in Florida are dwindling due to too many tea vegans eating insects that have been poisoned by pesticides. Although, throughout my research, I haven't found much evidence to confirm or deny this claim. These guys prefer open areas with low vegetation and thrive in loose, clay-based soil while avoiding areas with more sand. This is of course because the species is an opportunistic burrower, meaning they will dig deep, long burrows to protect themselves from the heat. Oddly enough, the scientists studying these guys have found that their burrows in the wild almost always point north. Harper seems to have missed the memo because her burrow points south. While the more official common name for this species is Mexican red rump, another name for it is the black velvet tarantula, and if you ever see one after a fresh molt, you'll know exactly why. The velvet, almost buttery, pitch black hairs of this tea contrast perfectly to the bright red setae that are found on the abdomen. It might be easy to overlook this species for being too common or plain, and even I'll admit I have flashier tarantulas in my collection, but in my opinion, nothing beats the stark contrast of the Mexican red rump. And hey, a classic is a classic for a reason. Like most tarantulas, females live significantly longer than males and grow larger as well. Females can reach a leg span of 6 or more inches and live well into their 20s with the proper care. Meanwhile, males reach a leg span of about 5 inches and live between 5 and 8 years. Females are generally thicker and more robust while males remain spindly with long legs and a smaller abdomen. As for the tarantula's enclosure, it all depends on how large your spider is. A pill bottle or small amec box would be perfect for a sling that's smaller than 1 inch. As it molts and gets bigger, you can move the sling to larger amec boxes, or you can purchase one of the many juvenile tarantula kits that are sold online, and they're the perfect size for your sling. While your tarantula is still 1.5 inches or smaller, it is important to remember to keep the humidity of your enclosure slightly higher than you would for an adult tarantula. You can do this by misting the surface of your substrate or overfilling the water dish. As your tarantula reaches its adult size, you have almost unlimited enclosure options. Fish tanks and critter keepers both work well for these tarantulas, as well as the fancier tarantula kits you can buy online. I do recommend something that measures at least 8 by 10 inches or bigger if you'd like to give your tarantula more opportunity to burrow and be out on display. The most important thing when choosing an enclosure is good ventilation, plenty of depth for substrate, and a secure latch or lid. As far as substrate goes, I recommend filling over half of your enclosure with a pre-made mix or your own blend of eco-earth, topsoil, and play sand. This gives plenty of opportunities for burrows as well as keeps the tarantula safe if it falls off the side of its enclosure. It is a good idea to mist the top of your substrate occasionally just to keep it from getting too dry. Overfilling their water dish and letting it seep into the substrate should work as well. Since I don't have a water dish, every week I wet one or two corners of the enclosure and allow the water to seep down. This not only gives Harper a chance to drink, it also allows her to self-regulate and burrow down to the damper soil if she needs more humidity. This species does not have any special requirements for temperature, preferring a range throughout the 70s, but they do fine as long as your house doesn't drop below 68 degrees. I find that my tea vegans only has two modes. She's either completely out on display or she's deep inside her burrow. I rarely see her using her provided hide, but it is still kind to offer at least one suitable object that they can crawl under, such as a piece of cork bark or a plastic aquarium piece. Whatever you choose, make sure it's big enough to allow your tarantula to fit completely underneath it. 
I personally also like to add leaf litter and other natural decor to make my enclosures more unique centerpieces. My tea Vagans has been an incredible eater, only rejecting a meal when she is about to molt. Adults of this species can be fed a variety of prey, including crickets, superworms, dubia roaches, and hornworms. Tiny slings should be fed pinhead crickets or even pre-killed mealworms, depending on how small your individual tarantula is. As your spider grows, you can increase your feeder size as well. Adults should be fed once a week to once every other week, and slings should be fed more often, averaging once every five to seven days. New World tarantulas have a mild venom that is not medically significant. However, as you can see by their fuzzy exterior, this species has urticating hairs that they can kick when they feel threatened. These hairs can cause skin irritation, itchiness, and difficulty breathing. In my experience, the T. vagans is much more willing to kick hairs than my T. elbow, and Harper kicks hairs at me pretty much any time I have to rehouse her or disturb her enclosure. However, I have never seen her threat pose or attempt to bite. You should still proceed with caution if you are handling or moving your pets. T. vagans grew in popularity for good reason. This tarantula makes a wonderful display animal, and the bright contrast of reds and blacks after a fresh molt is stunning. They are relatively calm animals that have a decent temperament and are great eaters. This was the second tarantula species in my collection and the first species I raised from a tiny sling. Harper helped me get hooked on keeping invertebrates. Another bonus to this species is their low price tag. They are very affordable and can be found in most pet stores, online breeders, and reptile or invert expos. So the next time you see one, definitely consider investing in this awesome animal. Well, that's all Harper and I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this quick care guide for one of my favorite species. If you did, be sure to like this video and leave a comment down below about your favorite tarantula species. I might just make a video about it. Thank you.